I'm gonna show you how to make your wildest vehicle dreams come true. What's up guys, Matt McGann, I'm here, your truck editor at Driving Line, and welcome to another episode of Chasing Dust. Today I got a great episode for you guys. I'm gonna show you how to make your wildest vehicle dreams come true. Sort of. What I'm talking about is Photoshop rendering. Uh, a big part of what I do at Driving Line is Photoshop, and one of the skills that I've gained over the years is how to make certain modifications in Photoshop on your vehicle so you can visualize them before you actually do those mods. I have a lot of friends who've asked me to help them out with their Photoshop needs, uh, whether it's a full build from you know basically a stock vehicle to a fully built vehicle in Photoshop to just maybe a lift kit added or some wheels and tires changed or the paint color changed. The possibilities are endless with what you can do with Photoshop. So it's a really cool program. Uh, if you don't know how to use it, I encourage you to give it a shot. It's not really hard to use. I've been doing it for about 15, 20 years now myself. Uh, since I was a teenager. Without any further ado, let's head up to my office. I'm gonna show you guys an example of a full build from start to finish on a Jeep Gladiator, basically a stock Jeep to something that I would personally drive with all the modifications and changes that I wanted to make to it. Let's go do it. All right, so here we are. Uh, first things first, we're gonna fire up Photoshop. Uh, this is gonna be a sped up tutorial because this uh, actual process took me about an hour and a half to complete. Obviously, I don't want a video that long, so this is going to be a very, you know, compressed version of what it takes to do this kind of thing. I'm going to try to walk you guys through each one of the steps as I quickly go through it in Photoshop. Um, so the first thing you want to do is find yourself a starting file to work with. If it's a picture of your own vehicle uh, or if it's, you know, a stock image or whatever it is. I found this one on Jeep's website. This is a, a very easy file to work with because it's well lit and it has a nice clean white background to work with and it's all stock. So it's basically a clean slate for whatever you want to do to a Gladiator. Um, I'm gonna kind of show you how I made this Gladiator into you know a version of one that I would build myself and kind of some of the things that I would do to it. Um, I'm gonna explain some of the modifications as we go along and explain a few of the processes to show you, you know, just on screen what I'm doing. And it's not gonna go into a very, very deep detail because that would take a very long time, but this is gonna give you a good overview of it. If you guys have any questions throughout this process, please feel free to just drop it in the comments. I'd be happy to tell you guys what I was doing or explain anything further. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is cut the body out of the image and create a separate layer. So we're gonna take our polygonal lasso tool here and we're gonna start cutting apart the body. I'm not gonna be using the wheels and tires and suspension, so I'm not even gonna bother cutting that piece out. Then I'm gonna take the windows out of it and start removing all the other elements on the body itself so we have just a clean, you know, just the body panels itself in tan, or goby tan is what Jeep's actual color is. So taking the hood latches out, the fenders, all the decals, the badges, um, you know, the bed there, you can see part of the bed tail lights, headlights, you know, all that stuff comes out. Wipers, mirrors, then you're left with a clean slate. I'm angling the body ever so slightly up, nose high, because they come with a factory rake. Get rid of some of the suspension. Start fitting uh, the tires underneath it. So I'm using a 40 inch trail grappler with a 17 inch wheel, and I'm borrowing some fenders from another Jeep. These are Nemesis off-road fenders, and these are what I would put on a Gladiator if I was to build one. They just look super nice and clean. They're flat, they're aluminum. So kind of placing the tires in a proportional area of where you want the lift height to be at. And then uh, next thing's gonna be cutting out some of the inner fender, cleaning that up. I'm gonna be using a Genrite front bumper here and uh, just looks real nice and clean. I'm using uh, the underbody from another Jeep which already has a long arm kit from Terraflex on it. And that just makes things really easy to just drop it underneath the Gladiator, kind of stretch it out to fit that wheelbase. Make sure the angle of the control arms is correct. You know, make sure it all fits right. 
So I'm using some Robbie Gordon two wheels from KMC. Uh, super cool wheels. That's what I would put on one of these things. A coilover kit is what I would do on this. Uh, you can see I'm kind of changing the color of the hoop there to match the body and uh, kind of give it a tan color. And then of course, changing the color of the coilover is from black and white to a king blue, which is what I would do on, uh, on a coilover is make it all king blue. Uh, do a king shocks on their front and rear. I'm gonna be using some rock slide engineering step sliders. Uh, put those guys on some gen right rear bumper there with the uh, you know in black powder coat. Of course, uh, changing the beadlock ring color to uh, match the body. Doing a little bit of window tint here, just kind of make things look real nice so the front window doesn't look you know super fishbowl like and the rear is tinted so. Uh, cleaning up some of the badging here, making them black, um, adding a black Jeep badge and a Gladiator badge below it. Making the fuel door black kind of gives a little more accenting there. Uh, of course, ang like I said, angling those uh, control arms is important to make sure that you have, you know, it looks consistent with what a real Jeep would look like. Adding brake rotors behind the wheels um, and calipers makes sense too. I started building a bed rack and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to scrap that for now and then start something else. So I wanted to put the spare tire in the bed angled like a pre-runner because I'm a desert guy. And uh, kind of was trying to position that tire correctly in the bed the way it normally would sit without, you know, looking too unrealistic. Make sure that the scale of the tire is correct. Adding a rhino roof rack really helps uh, kind of tie things together up top. I ended up ditching this later on in the final render uh, just to make it a little bit more clean, but that would be kind of cool to have a rack up there. This is a KC Pro 6 bar that I'm putting on the front windshield with matching brackets, and I made myself a little, you know, desert antenna for like a desert racer look. I added these accent stripes, and you know what? Later on, they didn't make the final cut. I just didn't like the way they looked. I scrapped those. As far as the hood decal goes, Desert Chief is what I wanted to add on there. Um, but after cleaning it up a bunch and trying to make it fit with the angle of the hood correctly, I just didn't like the way it looked there. So I ended up changing that out and uh, putting a Nitto logo there. Of course, this is the bed rack I was talking about that I ended up ditching later on. It, it was meant to kind of look like a pre-runner cage a little bit, but be more of a bed rack. And it just didn't really didn't really have the look that I wanted, so I, I kind of ditched the idea altogether. Now, of course, if you're going to be doing like a SEMA build or something, you want to have some logos from the companies you're working with on there. So I, I wanted to add some decals to the Jeep itself and make it kind of look like a full build and really finish things up. Um, so you can see here, here where I'm actually cutting out some of those decals and placing them. Of course, the Nitto tires, KMC wheels, KC highlights, Terraflex. Dynatrack axles, you know, worn winches, uh, Factor 55 products, um, you know, of course, changing some of the angle of things, making sure that the decals all fit correctly. That's all important finishing touches. This is towards the end of our build here. I wanted to put a Desert Chief Media decal on the door and then get rid of the one on the hood and change the Nitto logo to put that on the hood. It just fits better. I think it flows a lot better. You know, angling the lights and stuff and just some finishing touches here and there. Then you want to add a shadow below it. And then you want to place your image on top of another image so that it looks like, you know, it's actually off road. So I had this photo that I took from Johnson Valley last year and I kind of, you know, put a little bit of a white filter over it. And uh, yeah, pretty much getting close here. Adding, uh, you know, the tires on the other side really gives that three dimensional look. Before you know it, you have the final product. So. As you can see, it is a huge difference from what it looked like when it first started out. But I did remove that roof rack. I did remove the bed rack for a much cleaner look to it. And uh, I really, really dig the way that the whole thing turned out. I only wish that someday I could own a vehicle like this myself. So pretty cool. Um, that's pretty much A to Z from a, a stock Gladiator to what you see right in front of you here, which would probably be like $150,000 build, something I could probably never afford. But, you know. It's nice to be able to dream. I'm gonna show you guys a couple other examples of uh, some vehicles that I've done renders for in the past. Um, some of the ones including, you know, a few renders of Gladiators that I've done from a few of my friends, as well as uh, a render or two that I've done for myself. So a couple of these here, 
Uh, this is my buddy Taylor's Jeep that I did here. It's a silver JT Gladiator, which he actually already purchased, and he's in the process of building. And it's going to look pretty similar to this, actually, when it's done. So I'm really stoked to see how that turns out. Uh, then Brandon's here. We've got a black JT. He's got a lot going on in the bed. He wanted me to work on there. Some you know, dual shock suspension and stuff there. Um, and then further from there, I did do a full render on a race truck Ultra 4 Gladiator, uh, which I had to actually make into an access cab because the factory vehicle is way too long to fit over a race truck chassis. Um, so this is more or less my version of what an Ultra 4 JT or Gladiator would look like. You know, with a link, uh, four link system here with trailing arms, you know, coilover bypass, 40 inch Nitto tires with, uh, you know, KMC wheels, full coilover suspension up front, IFS, four wheel drive, a lot of really cool stuff going on here. But I did want to make this so that I could take the body and cut down the opacity and just show all the stuff that's going on underneath. So you can actually see the cage tubing of the chassis and the interior and all that stuff behind the body here. So this is kind of a, a, a version of me making a body fit over an existing race truck chassis and changing a few things like the spare tire, you know, the, the wheels and tires and stuff like that. So this wasn't, you know, too incredibly hard to do, but I did have to cut the cab down. That was the part that took the longest. Uh, of course, this, you know, rendering I called the Predator. It just kind of seemed like a cool name for this thing. So that was that. And then of course I did one for myself on my own Toyota where I did a TTV swap on Scarlet. I actually put it uh, over where a Bronco was from Desolate Motorsports. This is a photo I used from them. And you can see the twin traction beams here with the King shocks and the coilovers bypasses. And I placed my Toyota body on top of it. It's a little bit strange looking, but I don't think I quite have this scale down correctly. So I'm gonna go in there and kind of fix that a little bit later on. But anyways, um, yeah, this uh, final image turned out really nice, and that's pretty much what you would get after doing an entire build like this on Photoshop. And of course, like I said, this takes about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how you know skilled you are or how many times you've done this in the past or how crazy you want to get with the build. Um, I cut it down to just a few minutes to show you guys what it's you know the process looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions or anything, uh, please feel free to just drop it in the comments. I'd be happy to answer that for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. It was a lot of fun for me to sit there and show you guys exactly the steps you have to take to uh, do a Photoshop rendering on a Jeep Gladiator. Uh, I really wish I had that vehicle because it'd be really cool. Maybe one day I'll buy one and I'll build it up that way. But you can be sure that the day I do purchase one, I'll probably have a few changes that I want to make right off the bat and I'll get to Photoshop and all those changes and see what it looks like before I actually do the work. If you guys have any questions on some of the processes that I went through today, please feel free to send it in the comments below. And of course, if you guys like this video, please like, share, and if you like the channel, subscribe to Driving Line. We have a lot of really cool videos coming out for you guys, uh, whether it's features or if it's track day stuff, off-road stuff, all kinds of things. So uh, hit that little bell icon to make sure you guys are the first to know when we have a new video out. Out. Until next time, guys, this is Matt McAdam, your truck editor, Driving Line, aka Desert Chief. I'll see you on the next one.